done, uh, did a performance with him, Pat Bergeson and I and him, mm -hmm. just the three of us have Very done cool. that. And so those are just some of the people that are doing jazz in Nashville I've gotten to work with. Wow. And did you find the audiences were uh, interested in that style of music in Nashville? And you know, everyone thinks about Nashville as the country music apple of the world. So You know, maybe because people thought, wow, this is different. Here's this homegrown girl and she's got these dreadlocks and she's doing jazz. And not only that, she's getting up there and really like getting into it and throwing down. Yeah, it worked. It worked. I, I, I had a following. I still do. Um, I got my name in the paper quite a bit. I was out there as much as I could be out there, e you know, even at the beginning doing gigs that didn't pay anything, but just trying to be live and be present and be active and be doing it. And yeah, yeah. it did. I got a lot of attention for it and beyond because here's this jazz singer in Nashville. People in New York were even saying, who's that? What's that? Let's go check it out. Yeah. Well, that's very cool. So at some point in your career, probably within a short amount of time, you had to make a decision to be an artist. That's not an easy thing to decide to do because you were studying something else in college, right? What was your first major in school? I majored in sociology, and you have to pick an emphasis, and I picked gerontology, the study of uh, elderly and aging. So I thought hmm. I was going to go into work with old people. Yeah. And, uh, and I, did start, I did start out doing that. And then as I was singing at night, and, and I was an activity director in a nursing home, and as I was calling bingo numbers out during the day, I started, it, it was too taxing on my voice. I had to pick one or the other. And I thought, you know, music, w when you have an opportunity, if there's a door that's open for you and things are working, you really got to run through that door at that time. And I thought, I can go back to gerontology someday. You know. There's always plenty of old people. Yeah. So the decision to be an artist, that's funny. There's two, that's, that happens on two levels. There was a career decision to be an artist when I was in college, when I was 20 years old, and I said, I'm going to pick something and I'm going to go for it. And I picked jazz singing. And I thought, you know, you know however this goes, good or bad, I'm going to stick with it and I'm going to see it through. I've got a 20-year goal that I'm still working on. And then, but then the decision to be an artist as an inward decision, what is artistry? What does creativity mean to me? What does this really mean? Am I an artist? I mean, that's something that I've, I've been heavily exploring uh, just even recently after mm -hmm. doing this for 17 years professionally. So. And you do a lot of, uh, you, you really aggressively seek out instruction in that, right? You just came from Hawaii. You were in Hawaii for a while. Yeah. What were you doing in Hawaii? There's this woman that lives in Hawaii. Her name is Rhiannon not Rihanna. Uh, she's a vocal improv master. And I've been interested in, in how the voice can make percussive sounds or bass line sounds or, or even sounds that you might pull from nature and melodic lines and whatever. And so we, we were all, there's 12 singers studying with her all this year. And we're, we're making improvised vocal pieces just in the moment. Um, yeah, with a certain set of rules and instruction and games, if you will. And so I've been interested in turning around and giving that to other singers. Mm -hmm. So I run my own retreats for singers where we do vocal improv. And, and, uh, and I'm looking for ways to mix this in with my show. It's just, it's, it's so liberating. You, you can improvise without having to do it exactly like Ella Fitzgerald did it. And I found that really liberating. Right. right. And you do a lot of other work other than uh, uh, singing and being an amazing singer and, and touring musician and doing uh, singing circles. And yeah. you also work with the Girl Scouts, right? Yeah, well, in the last few years, I, I, after being a solo artist and being out front and it being about me all the time, I got kind of like, you know, I want to be, be given back somehow. So I started, started working with young girls and, and found that that, that works well because I can be a goofball and whatever, and they seem to respond to it. So... For the Girl Scouts, um, I have done quite a bit of dance, drama, and music programming. But as well, I found out that at the camps, I could train to facilitate rappelling, rock climbing, canoeing, tree climbing. So I put the helmet and the harness on and get them suited up and tie all the ropes and send them off the backs of cliffs. And, and their moms and dads are OK <laughs> with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, music and everything else for me, it's like, I love taking risks. I love living on the edge. And I love encouraging other people to do the same. And, and, and young girls, they just, you know, if you, you get them started with, 
with activities that are exciting and, and ways that they, they look to you to say, yeah, you can do this, come on. You got it, just look me in the eye, we'll do this together, we'll talk to. I love being able to facilitate and be in a position to help other people just, you know, go for their dreams like I've done. That's amazing, and you know, there's an old saying that if you, if you work at something you enjoy, you never work a day in your life. And it looks like you've managed to be able to do that for a long time, and you really enjoy what you do. And uh, how, how did you make that transition? What, what, uh, what was that turning point that you said, I'm going to do what I enjoy? And how did you figure out how to monetize that art? Well, I guess I do have a little bit of an entrepreneurial spirit, and I am creative, and so I just... I just think of projects that I think I can make money doing and I go and seek them out. I picked up the phone and called the Girl Scouts and just said, here's my, 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 my talents and here's what I do and you know, what, how can we work together because I'm interested in what you're doing. Mostly the camps, because camp is really fun, it's really awesome. Speaking of uh, camping, how did you, <laughs> I heard that you travel in a pretty unique way. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, I got a Winnebago named yeah. Trevor. Named Trevor? Yeah. Yeah. Love the Winnebago. After traveling a bunch and repacking a suitcase in hotel rooms and unpacking the suitcase and sleeping, you know, at someone's house or whatever, and it was just, I thought it would be nice to have my own traveling hotel room that I don't have to pack and unpack with me everywhere I go. Plus, some of the venues we play, it's not as fantastic as this one. There's not a dressing room. And it's nice to have my own little dressing room to get away and go make tea on the break. Or the band can come and we talk about the second set sitting around the little dinette table inside the Winnebago. So It's nice to have your own rolling green room. Along with yeah, it. <laughs> it's great. I love it. So that was another dream I've had since I was a kid to have a, have a motor home. And so I made that happen too. But yeah, and, and really, honestly, talking about the artist thing, I did look around just this last year and I thought, yeah, I am an artist because I've, I've created my life to be what I want it to be. And I do the things that I enjoy and I, I make money doing the things that I enjoy. And I think that's what an artist, what it means to be an artist partly. And I guess at some point you have to be able to look at yourself and, and, and see yourself in the mirror as an artist. And you look at yourself and you say, that's what I do. I'm an artist. Yeah, and it's hard because when somebody says, if somebody said, what do you do? If I were to say, I am an artist. I mean, how does that sound, right? <laughs> it sounds so pompous, like you're saying, I'm a good artist or I'm a great artist. And so I think I struggled with that label a little bit, but once, once I kind of turned around and claimed it, I found myself being way more creative. Mm -hmm. um, I have a one-woman show on YouTube, if anybody wants to see it, it's called What is an Artist? And it was my grappling with this question. So, you know, a one-woman show is another way that I can work as a performer and and still be as authentic as I can. Well, Annie, we have really enjoyed talking with you. I'm so happy you were able to take some time and, and come by and, and talk with the students and answer some questions and uh, work with the, all the folks here at the music production program at Daytona State College. We're just so fortunate to have you, and we sure hope you can keep coming back as often as you want. Thank you. I'd love to. I love this theater, and I love everything I've seen. You guys have such a great facility and a great program here. I'm really impressed. Well, thank you very much. We're sure. very proud of it. We're very proud of it, and we, we know that you've uh, probably answered a lot of great questions that the students have had. and. Uh, I had a few students that were asking about maybe some vocal lessons, so we may have to negotiate a little bit later on. And, that would be great. I'd love and to. I know that you do that. You do clinics around the country, mm -hmm. and it's possible that we could have you back sometime and, yeah. and uh, twist your arm a little bit and yeah, yeah. do some more things. Yeah. But we're really looking forward to the concert. It's going to be great. And uh, once again, thank you very much for coming and joining us. And uh, everybody here at Daytona State College is just very fortunate to have you here. Well, thank we you. We're really ready to it. we're ready to to bring our best to your stage and your people and your friends and and it's been a wonderful time visiting with you. Thanks for everything. Well, you're sure welcome. Well, thank you very much and uh, let's go have a show. Let's do it. All right. Let's go.